give everybody a basic understanding of how the clutch dyno works and the principles behind it, you have to understand basically what you're wanting to do with it. Basically, the big thing is you're able to uh, understand plate load and finger applied pressure better at an overall RPM. For example, your fingers are going to apply more at the higher RPM than they are at the lower RPM and understand the time in which uh, they'll lock up, be able to control the time in which they lock up or the RPM that it does uh, in accordance with the load that is uh, needed uh, or seen or uh, that the track and weather conditions somewhat make you apply. Basically what you're going to see is the clutch dyno, uh, made famous of course by uh, Kyle Carruthers of Roush uh, Engineering uh, fame, but uh, Kyle's a real great guy, done a lot. Um, this is a really nice piece of engineering. Uh, basically what you have is when you look at what we have here, is this here is actually the load plate. Um, and what it is, is this is a 7 inch uh, clutch design that we're actually doing some stuff um, for Australian Pro Stock. Um, what you'll see here is we actually have what we call the uh, load cells, which this is actually considered a button. It's a dummy. It allows for di uh, equal distribution over the entire mating surface. There's three points, so basically that the computations can be correct. Uh, followed by the actual load cell itself, which has the wire. And what we actually do is we tape a little piece in here as it spins. Um, this machine can take it, uh, the clutch RPM, up to a little bit over 10,000 RPM and allow us to map all the pressures and assemblies as to how it goes from there. Um, the next thing that you'll notice is, or you'll ask is, hey, what are, what are we doing here? What are we gaining? Um, this is a perfect example. This clutch that you'll see here, um, this clutch is an old um, Hayes clutch that basically is a customer's clutch that we're working on redeveloping, basically. Um, this was the original finger that was out of this clutch. Um, what we needed to do was make some changes. What you'll see here is the new finger that's been uh, CNC cut, uh, this chromoly construction, and you can see the differences in it. This will allow it to actually apply a little bit faster um, and hold the clutch a little bit better. Uh, by moving it away from the fulcrum point, we're able to basically um, change the amount of applied force and the amount of applied pressure. Here with the clutch, basically you can get a better idea of what we were talking about before. Once again, this is your fake button. What it does is you have three points. Three points allows for equal triangular distribution, so it's just a finite process to figure out what you have uh, so that you have equal distribution between the three points. This is the point that actually accepts the load. Why we put it, we place it here is basically because it's right underneath the finger point. So whenever you set your hat down upon your clutch, what you'll actually see is where that's going to go down is going to be basically right underneath the finger lever point. So it gives us a more equal distribution, it gives us a more accurate number. Uh, when we're ready to set the clutch up, basically what we do is we're replacing this with the clutch pack. So basically, you'd have your flywheel bolted into your, uh, into this, basically what this is, the clutch machine is a spintron, basically. It uh, takes the load, of the, or the place of the clutch pack, and what you do then is, of course, you set, you place, um, you place your hat back upon here. You set everything down, and what we'll do is, as normal as most everybody is accustomed to, when you're all everything done, you get your dial indicator available, and what you're going to do is you're going to set your ring height to the exact height. The change in ring height can apply, can actually change the rate of application for the finger. Um, so therefore, you can have the load come in quicker or slower, depending on what your hat height actually is. But your hat, hat height on a clutch like this, which is considered zero base, zero base simply means that whenever this clutch, the all the turns of base are out of it, it has zero base. Whereas most people are accustomed to the fact that when you go to zero, it still retains. Some more say 150 to 300 to 600 pounds, depending on the application. Um, that makes these a little bit more crucial, but the design options are pretty simple on uh, being able to make little changes without having to completely re-engineer the unit. Now that we have the hat assembly back on top of the of the uh, of the rest of the assembly, basically what we're doing now is we've got all our stands zeroed, and we can see this, of course, by finding the hole and bringing the dial to zero or very close to it. Um, once this is done, basically we're ready to go ahead and go ahead and put the protective bell housing on. Once it's down, basically it has a fail safe attached to it uh, so that it can't be started until everything's in. Once all the bolts and everything are in, we're going to be ready to start. We're going to go Once everything is, is ready, you're ready to basically insert, uh, reinstall the bell housing shield and make a dyno pole. We're ready to make a pull now. Basically what we've done is we're set to 6,000 RPM. Uh, that's how fast we're going to spin this clutch. Uh, it's just as a, an example of basically what it does. Uh, this one here specifically, we actually spin up to 10,000 RPM to gain a little bit more knowledge and more information. But basically it's going to give you a basic idea of what it does. 
what we do is we trip the uh, we go ahead and start start the machine, and once we start it, we go ahead and trip it, kind of like a data recorder on a race pack. And you see now our 2,000 RPM. Clutch has come to a complete stop, and basically we've shut off our timing system, our recorder, and now we're going to go and take a chance to look at what. All right, now what you can see is the run that we just made, and basically what you're looking at here is your applied pressure, which you can see here, and red is in load and RPM. So we can basically look here and see exactly how many RPM we are turning in order to how much load was applied. This is a very standard lever; it's nothing of one of our special design levers. Um, however, basically this allows us to tell you with zero counterweight what it will do. We can then make uh, incremental changes, we can make staggered changes, and we can make new fingers and new designs to increase the fulcrum point or shorten it, as well as uh, change the amount of, pre uh, amount of weight that is on the inside or outside of the fulcrum point, which speeds the process of the applied rate of load. So basically by after we do this, we can then basically map this and show ourselves a spreadsheet and a graph as to what it's going to do and what the possibilities are. So this is just a good insight as to the basics of a clutch dyno and what some of the, um, what some of the tools can be used for. Um, that's why we do uh, custom design as no two clutches are exactly the right thing for each.